Hi everyone, my name is Ken Ehrman and I am the president and founder of ID Systems. Um, I'm here today to talk about wireless vehicle management systems for managing industrial trucks across your enterprise. So I don't have that many slides, believe it or not, so I have a lot to just talk to you about. Um, but to make sure I'm tailoring this to what you guys are looking for, I would like to ask a very simple question, which is, how many people know what a vehicle management system is, have experience with it? I mean, am I talking about something that you guys are pretty familiar with at this point? Or is this really kind of your first dabble in it? Anyone want to? Is there any, who doesn't know anything about a vehicle management system, if you don't mind? Okay. And the rest of you, I assume, either know about it or have used it or have been looking at it. Is that true? Okay. Puts me in quite a predicament. <laughs> I'm going to try. Half the people know about it and the other half of the people don't. So let me start with the basics. Um, and give you an idea about what a wireless vehicle management system is and why you would need it. So if you are a company that manages, operates, or owns industrial trucks or forklifts, if you walked into one of your facilities, you would see a lot of forklift trucks moving around, maybe some of them idle, but there are two OSHA laws that are out there. One is a law that says only trained people need to be able to drive those trucks. And the second is that before you drive them, you need to inspect those trucks. So when you're talking about, for example, a Walmart plant that might have 150 forklifts running around, unless the operators drive around with 150 keys in their pocket, inevitably the keys are left in the trucks. And what that means is anyone can operate them at any time. There's no accountability. Um, which means right away you're violating OSHA law number one, which is ensuring that only trained people are driving this equipment. So for those who don't know this statistic, forklift trucks are the number two cause of deaths for Fortune 100 companies. Second to, I don't know if anyone could guess, anyone. I know Roger knows. Highway accidents. Right? I mean, vehicles are typically the cause of many deaths. So forklift trucks, if you imagine in an, uh, an environment like a Ford manufacturing plant or a Walmart distribution center, you have a forklift with some heavy weight on it, potentially blocking the vision of the driver, moving anywhere from 5 to 15 miles an hour, and you have pedestrians walking around on their iPhone, listening, doing work, whatever they're doing. It's a very dangerous mix. So that's why OSHA has these two laws. So what our system does is instead of having operators walk around with 150 keys, is our device is linked to the ignition of the truck. And in order to start the vehicle, you have to present your access control badge the same way you would to get into a building. So once you present your badge to the device, it's linked to the ignition. If you're authorized to drive that truck, if you're trained, it will start. If not, it won't. Once you log in, the second OSHA law comes into place, which is that you need to inspect the vehicle for safety. So the device recognizes that you just logged in, and depending upon your state's laws, is configured to require you to do a checklist if that's what your state requires. So for example, every time there's a new driver, you might need to do a checklist, or once a shift. Every state is different, but the system can be configured to require an operator to do that OSHA checklist before they can drive that vehicle. It also has an impact sensor. The impact sensor is unlike any impact sensor in the marketplace. It works exactly like your car's airbag system. So what I mean by that is, I don't think any one of us who own any cars want to set our airbags in the cars. You set it too low, it's going to start going off all the time, and airbags are pretty expensive. If you set it too high, when you get into an accident, the airbag doesn't go off, you die. So no one wants to be in the setting of the airbag business uh, threshold. Very similar to an impact sensor on a forklift truck. No one wants to buy a system like this and set the impact sensor threshold. It's very cumbersome. You set it too low, you get impacts all the time. I get tons of customers who come to us and say, 
we can't use this system that we have. It's going off all the time, so we just deactivated it. You also set it too high, no impacts ever go off, no matter what happens. So what you want is an impact sensor that works just like the car's airbag. It sets itself, it adapts to the environment, and is able to, based on the information coming into it, identify a real impact from just rough operation, just like a car. So if you go onto rough road when you're in your car, your airbags aren't going off because your car has a very smart system. It knows an impact from driving over railroad tracks. So that's what ID Systems has incorporated into our technology. So those basic premises, access, impact sensing, and OSHA checklists are the cornerstone of any vehicle management system. However, if you can imagine, because now you have to log in, um, you know who the driver is, there's now accountability from not just a safety standpoint, but from a production standpoint. So now you know how many hours people are logged in versus not logged in. You can monitor the truck for like motion, see whether the vehicle's moving or not. You can monitor if you add this type of a sensor, a load lift sensor, whether you're moving a load. So now, once someone logs in, you're keeping track of how productive those people are being. So that's where the third set of bullets come in. You actually can use this type of vehicle management technology to track the vehicle's utilization, how many hours it's really being used. You could see things like your peak fleet, so maybe you have 80 trucks, but you never use more than 60 or 70 simultaneously. You can collect information. And these are all capabilities of a system like this. You could find trucks. You can locate them within your plant. You can um, actually monitor batteries. So when batteries are put on the truck, you can see how they're performing, make sure they're meeting their specification. Are you getting eight hours of use out of your battery or only two hours of use? So every part of the characteristics of that forklift truck that we can think of is able to be monitored by a vehicle management system and all of that data is collected wirelessly into a software program that gives you real-time visibility to your fleet as well as historical reporting capabilities to look at your fleet performance over time. Does that make sense? I tried to do the quick introduction of the vehicle management system. The last thing, and I didn't talk about it, but it's worth mentioning, is a lot of people spend anywhere from two to $300 per month doing preventative maintenance on their forklifts. If they do the maintenance themselves, they're saving a little bit of money, but on the other hand, they have labor, so it may be the same. A lot of people outsource it to dealers, and that's the typical cost. By knowing how many hours the vehicle's actually being used, and having a technology that's monitoring that, no matter what type of vehicle you have, you have a consistent means of measuring the actual use of the equipment to schedule your preventative maintenances. So from a maintenance cost standpoint, by using the data, you should see significant cost savings. Hold on, I need to move to the next step. So this is an area that a lot of people don't really either believe or understand. And this is critical of what I would like to present. Perhaps some of you guys have seen this type of triangle. I'm pretty sure that Raymond, the truck manufacturer, has this at their booth. But it's very much focused on individual trucks. Well, the, new, the presentation I'm going to make today is much more about not the individual truck, but the enterprise. So let me give you an idea about how these costs break down. If you have one forklift and you have three operators, if you're a three-shift operation, and you're paying your forklift drivers $60,000 a year, for example, on three shifts, that's $180,000 in labor associated with each truck. If you only run two shifts, it's $120,000 in labor. If you only run one shift, it's $60,000 in labor. But labor, by far, is the most cost, costly component of operating a forklift truck. So that number up there presumes about 50, three, one, three shifts, $50,000 an operator, $150,000. The truck itself 
typically costs anywhere from three to five thousand dollars per year in lease operating costs. We talked about the maintenance costs. If you talk about two hundred dollars a month, that's um, about twenty-four hundred dollars a year. The damage that these trucks cause tend to be in the hundred dollars a month, hundred and fifty dollars a month. The energy, the batteries. The bottom line is when you add it all up on an individual truck level, it's about $200,000 per truck. And that's pretty much the industry standard. I think if you read mh and Magazine, just about any magazine will tell you that the labor and cost associated with owning and operating a truck is roughly $200,000. So what we're looking at today, and that's part of the title of our presentation, is an enterprise view. So if you have 500 trucks, and you're spending $200,000 a year per truck, that means you're spending about $100 million a year on your forklift fleet. That's a big number, especially because it's not helping you if you're a company in any way other than moving material to the stores. So the supply chain is really just a complete expense item. And if you could reduce those expenses, there's you know, financial people who could translate that to increased sales. The amount of increased revenue you need for every dollar saved in expense can be pretty significant. It's something about whatever the gross margin is. So if you can really reduce your expense on your industrial truck fleet, you can have a significant impact on the bottom line for your company. And the reason, if you, I think people know that they're spending about $100 million a year on this type of thing if they have 500 forklifts because there's an entire world of companies that are out there today that are selling automation technologies to reduce labor. So we're talking about ERP systems, warehouse management systems, RFID systems, barcode scanners, labor management systems. Manhattan Associates is a multi-billion dollar company that just focuses on this because the costs are massive. So what I do, the vehicle management systems, what you will see as we move through this, are a critical component of reducing those expenses. So what I'm talking about today primarily is what's called VMS analytics. It's a completely new concept. So now it's no longer, the technology is no longer about being a forklift accessory. So I talked about all the benefits of vehicle management systems before, safety, fleet efficiency, labor practices, uh, maintenance, any one of those could probably provide you with a one-year return on investment of the system. But at this point, it's, it's really grown to something well, well beyond that functionality. So what is analytics? So what analytics is, is the ability to compare your performance to your peers. So because we are tracking and monitoring, literally, tens of thousands, up to about 75,000 forklifts at half of the Fortune 200, we have the ability for the first time in this industry to create benchmarks, operational benchmarks. So let's just use a simple example. Utilization rate. You would imagine that your truck's utilization rate, if you do everything by hand, and pencil and paper, and you don't buy any of that automation technology that's out there. So to get their next job, someone has to drive to some location, ask what their next job is, or maybe walkie-talkies. But let's say they're really low tech, that their utilization rate might be 30 to 40%. I'm just making that number up, by the way, for a second. But just let's pick a number for the purposes of this discussion. Let's say it's 40%. You would hope that the companies that are using RFID, barcode scanning, labor management, warehouse management, would have a higher utilization rate, right? You're getting them their job faster. So their next task comes to them automatically. Their next pick location comes to them automatically. So that truck should be moving more, should be doing more than the truck that does it manually or by walkie-talkie. It inherently makes sense, but there's really no way to know. For example, let me go to this example. If you put an RFID system onto your fork trucks so that instead of the operator having to get off the fork truck he, and scan the barcode that's on the pallet, it'll just automatically identify the pallet, it would save eight seconds per pick. 
eight seconds per pick, and then when you drop it off and you scan the location you dropped it off, maybe eight seconds per drop off. That's 16 seconds per pallet, 200 pallets, 3,200 seconds in savings. You put a dollar amount to your labor rate. That's the ROI for putting your RFID system on your fork trucks. Well, what does that mean when it comes to analytics? Well, when you put that in, you had better see your motion to login rate go up. So if in the past you were logged into your truck eight hours and you were moving six hours, well, with a RFID system, that six hours had better go to six hours plus 3,200 seconds, right? If not, they lost that time that you thought you picked up by putting on the RFID radar somewhere else in the process. So by measuring the truck, you're able to get a true picture of any type of automation technology that you're putting in, any type of new process that you put in, you know, phone calls or walkie-talkies or everyone's going to come to my office at 8 a.m. All of it should result in, hopefully, more stuff being moved through your distribution centers or manufacturing plants or doing it with fewer people or fewer trucks, one or the other. But the only way to know how you're doing is to measure those rates. And that's what analytics does. Because what it now gives you the visibility to is looking at every single site that you have and what your utilization rate is by site. So one site might be at a 70% utilization rate, one site might be at a 30% utilization rate. That's a big difference. And you should be able to quantify that difference because there's actual hours, just like that RFID reader example, that can be very easily quantified to say, if you go from 30% to 70%, this is how many dollars you could save to get that lower performing site up to that higher performing site. Does that make sense to everybody? So, but it's even beyond that. So not only do you get to see your enterprise and all the different sites and those key performance indicators like utilization rate, damage rate, peak fleet rate, really key things that will tell you how your fleet is performing. But this is where it gets really exciting to me. Because we have a database of all these assets, these 75,000 assets that we're tracking every day, we can also help you tell your, whoever would ask you, how you're doing compared to your peers. So my utilization rate is 52% as an enterprise. Well, is that good or bad? Where is that? What percentile am I in? So if you think of like children taking SAT, or not SATs, but like, you know, they're standardized tests, every kid gets to know what percentile they're in. Well, the same thing applies, right? I mean, when I talk to prospects for this type of a system, very often they say, we can't improve, we're great. We have every technology, when we go to Modex, every technology out on the floor, we have. So there's no possible way we can improve. So my answer to that in the past had always been, well, maybe you're right, maybe you are great. I don't know. And I, those are the deals we, we didn't necessarily win. But now I have a way to answer that question, right? I could put the system on six trucks, 10 trucks, 20 trucks, and actually tell them what percentile they're in. So I could say, you know what? You may think you're at the best in your peak performance, but you're in the 62nd percentile in the automotive industry. So there are peers in your industry that are, instead of at a 52% utilization rate, which is what you're at, are at a 75% utilization rate. And by the way, so your percentile, like I said, is you might be at a 52% utilization rate, but you're in the 62nd percentile. So those, those are two percentages, so it's a little bit confusing, but they mean two completely different things. So the benefit of analytics now, because we have all this data that we've collected literally for the last 14 years that we've been doing this, we can start telling you what rate you will want to be during the peak season, for example, during the Christmas rush, what the peak utilization rates were during the you know, boom times of the year 2000. Or during the recession how, of 2008, how low did the utilization rates get? In fact, very shortly, we're going to be publishing in MHNL magazine the key, three key rates. We haven't decided which ones yet, but utilization will certainly be one of them, month to month in this industry. 
so you can start seeing what the utilization rates are. What we've been talking about was 3PLs, non-3PL distributions, and manufacturing, and then pr publishing the 50th percentile, the 85th percentile, and the 15th percentile of those rates, and then trans you know, basically pr you know, presenting them on a monthly basis to the MHNL readers. Um, so that gives you visibility to two things, right? It tells you what your percentile is, but it also it gives you the ability to know where you should be able to get to, um, because other peers in your industry are there. But then it gets even more exciting because you can integrate with other systems, right? All those other systems that you have can feed data into this system and help you get that much more benefit. So you can take this data and compare your paid time from your time and attendance system. So let's say you pay your forklift drivers for eight hours. You can see how many hours they're actually logged in. Compare the two so, and come up with a rate. That's your percentage. That's your login to paid rate. That's a perfect example of a KPI that our customers use. And you can compare the login to paid rate of all of your plants, but also yourself to your peers. So it gives you an idea about how um, you can measure your performance. But the next thing it also gives you the ability to do, and that's this third bullet down here, and this is very important because anyone who has had experience um, with vehicle management systems in the past knows that it's somewhat difficult to measure the return on investment. So Roger Tenney is here, he's from ID Systems. He was involved in actually implementing this system throughout all of Ford. But in the past, in order to determine the return on investment, someone would have to go in and measure. Did we reduce the fleet? How many trucks did we get rid of? Which of the three trucks we got rid of? How much were they costing us? How, did we reduce our employee overtime? Did we re increase the, you know, did we reduce employees? What, it's, it was a very cumbersome process to measure the return on investment. And when an executive said to someone who purchased a system like this, what have we saved? The answer has always been, well, we, we cut 10 trucks, or you know, we reduced labor, or we did, reduced overtime, but it wasn't necessarily as definitive as it could be. And the executive always said, well, that's that plant. These other plants don't necessarily have the ability to do that. That plant was always the inefficient plant. Of course they were able to save money. That was the inefficient one. So now what we can do is create the benchmark. So when you first put the system in, the day you do that, we will tell you what your utilization rate was for the first week before you start running reports, before you start looking at the data, before you start doing anything. We will tell you that your utilization rate on day zero was 52%. Then a month later, when you start using the system, we can tell you that it went up to 58%. Now, that 6% improvement, someone has asked me in the past, like, did you really save money just because that went up? Is it hard dollars? Well, the answer is a definitive yes. And the reason for that is, if you don't do anything differently, it won't go up. I mean, I know that sounds simple, but let's say, for example, you have a shipping department whose utilization rate is 50%. If you don't start looking at that shipping department and actually making changes, changes being maybe instead of 10 people, only have eight people working shipping, or maybe instead of having all 10 people from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., ha you have eight people from 8 a.m. to noon. And then if you don't start making changes, those rates are not going to improve. It's impossible. So it's just like I said about the RFID system. If you get put on that RFID system on the lifts and you're picking up eight seconds per pallet, that utilization rate had better go up. If it doesn't go up, then you never really save money on that RFID system. So the KPIs actually either improving or going down for that matter is directly correlated to dollars saved in your process or they will not change. So that is, it's very easy to quantify. You can put, it's very easy to say if my motion to login ratio went up by 4%, I, I just gained 200 extra hours of motion time within my plant which means I moved more pallets, depending upon how many pallets you need to move. So there's a direct correlation on these KPIs to how much money you actually saved, and there's a way to do specific math on how you just do the hours. 
If it went up from 52% to 56%, how many hours was that? Depends on how many trucks you have and how many shifts you work, but the good part about it is it's straight math. So you're measuring when you started, you were at this KPI, currently you're at this percentage. We can tell you how much money you're saving with the VMS from our office now, instead of having to send someone in and do the analysis. So here's kind of a, a data flow, and it gives you a feeling for how it actually all rolls up. So here's, it's kind of almost impossible to read, I realize, so I'm gonna have to read it for you. But it goes from department up to a site, up to your enterprise. So if you look, it's probably easier to read this enterprise one because it's slightly bigger. Here's how it breaks down for the forklifts in this particular enterprise. 24% of the time, they are moving with a load. Is that good or bad? Well, no one knows. Before analytics, no one knew the answer to that. But now we can tell you whether that's you know, 50th percentile in your industry, 40th percentile. We can tell you what that is. 24% of the time, you are idle with a load. So there's a load on that forklift, but you're not moving. <coughs> Excuse me. 20% of the time, you're moving without a load. That's deadhead time, right? That's getting to your next job. 12% of the time, you're logged into the truck, but you're not on the vehicle. And the way we know that is we're monitoring the seat switch or the dead man. So you're logged in, but you're just doing something off the vehicle. Happens all the time. Then you have non-vehicle use hours. 24% of the time, you're not logged into a vehicle at all. So you're doing something else, whatever that else is, but you're not logged in. And 18% of the time, actually that's 20, you are inactive. What does inactive mean? You're logged in, you're standing on the dead man, or sitting on the uh, seat switch, but the vehicle is not moving at all. It's literally dead time. Just literally doing nothing. So again, we roll up all this information in our analytics tool by site, by department. Now it all starts at the bottom level, right? So the supervisor of the department has to be able to see how those break down by department and try to improve the green ones, or at least set standards. And if you improve those green ones, because you're gonna have certain people, the way it all plays out, that are gonna be at a 40% motion with load, and others that are at a 10% motion with load. So you wanna to get to the bottom of that, right? And if you can get the 10% guy up to the 40% guy, then that department, that green part of the pie, should increase. Then, when you roll up all the departments in the site, the green part of the pie here should increase. And then up here, ultimately, if all the sites are measured by these benchmarks and improve, ultimately, it's going to result in all the sites and your entire enterprise increasing those green parts of the pie. Does that all make sense? So here's how it translates into actual dollars. So when you're talking about analytics, and this is an example of kind of the reporting system that we have, you have activity rate, fleet utilization rate, operator utilization. So each one of those rates, sleeper rate is that time I was just talking about, which is you're logged in and you're on the dead man, but you're not, there's no activity on that truck. So let's say, I'll just pick two examples. This example is uh, operator utilization. Operator utilization is how many hours are they logged in versus you're paying them for. So in this case, this particular customer is at 53%. So 53% of the time, their operators are logged in when they're being paid. So what that means is they paid for eight hours and they're logged in 4.2 hours, roughly. So obviously they're doing things off the truck or whatever else they're doing, but they're only logged in 4.2 hours. If you can improve that 53% by literally just 1% to 54%, and by the way, that in this analysis, we're talking about a customer with 14 sites, 643 forklifts, and 1,500 operators roughly. If you can get each one of these KPIs to go up by 1%, then the math, which I'm happy to show anyone who's interested when we go back after this presentation, shows that you would save on an annualized basis roughly $1.29 million per year. 
So if you literally just get yourself up 1%, you will now get a one-year ROI on our system because our system roughly costs $2,000 a vehicle on the low end. So 643 trucks, it's about 1.2 million. 1% gets you a one-year ROI. If you can get up to the 85th percentile, which is the percentages where it goes from yellow to green, so I don't, this thing's not working. It wasn't working last time either, but if you can go from 53% to 77%, and essentially on every one of these KPIs, get yourself up to your industry's 85th percentile, which, by the way, was, is where everyone thinks they are. So, you know, again, when we go in, everyone's like, oh, I'm the best and we're doing great. But if, if you can actually get to the 85th percentile in your industry on a 643 truck system, we're talking about roughly $20 million a year in annual savings. So that's fantastic. But now, again, you know in your industry what are achievable rates. Now, you may not be able to achieve it. I can't, you know, we can help you with that. But there's certainly consultants who can help you with that. Our data will help you with that because you're going to see what every operator is at. And if you go back one slide, you're going to be able to see every activity, every department, which you've never really been able to see before, and make the appropriate adjustments in your operation to get yourself up to that industry 85th percentile. So that's what's great about this analytics tool, is you can really easily measure the ROI of the system by comparing your baseline KPIs to where you are today, and also set metrics of where you think you should be able to get to based upon your peers in your industry. So I think we talked about the benefits a lot, but these are the kind of benefits. You know, elevating your material handling performance of your lower performing sites and regions so the lower performing sites can learn from your better performing sites. What are the best practices they're doing? Share that information. Balance your fleet mix. Find, you know, basically the, tr the facilities that have too many vehicles, take those vehicles to provide them to the ones who are running too lean. Um, avoid underuse. I mean, there's so, I mean, the benefits are pretty significant. And as I mentioned, you know, it's really being used today in half of the Fortune 200 because people are very much concerned with that number back from the first slide. So, this one. So, in any event, at this point, since we only have about 10 minutes left, I would love to uh, open the forum for any questions.